Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it's o'clock again, and I'm Pearl of Wisdom. You're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, of course. Everybody in the land knows that. Um, I hope you've been enjoying the other fine programming we're doing right now. We just started a series where we're going through every team and how their offseason has went and where they're going. And we also did a free agent winners and losers with no other than John from Off the Wall Hockey. If you have not seen his channel, I'd highly recommend you go over to subscribe. It is one of the best there. I said it. Um, I love the guy. And we're doing, we're doing Calgary together later on this afternoon. Yeah, so that's going to be cool. Um, did the I started off with Arizona, did that by myself. Couldn't find anybody to kind of play with me on that one. Uh, then I went, but well, we did find somebody to play with me for Anaheim. Yes, we did. We got uh, Deli, Anthony Chardelli, one of the finest Anaheim writers in the land. We did a, uh, with also, of course, Joe Borg, Professor Joe, 23-year-old. Professor Joe, guy knows everything about everything, that is everything. He's amazing. Loved it. It was fun. We had a great time. So, um, I'm going to continue on doing that series, as I said. But uh, today, we are going to get into the Lion A trade, which appears to be happening. And if you remember, boys and girls, if you go back into your notes, if you go back into your journals there, about two months ago, I would say, I was calling, saying that Lion A was likely going to be traded. Maybe even longer than that. And a lot of people were like, oh, how, you know, where are you getting this from? I don't get it from anywhere. I just look at what is logical. And they say, you said you might, they call it, you know, you, people can call it speculation, I suppose. But if you look back in my videos and people that watch them, you'll see that I'm usually not far off from the truth because it just hap so happens I spend an ungodly amount of time thinking and studying about hockey. <laughs> A divorce-worthy amount of time. In which case, I bring you this fine programming. So anyways, the reason why I said the line it was going to be traded was because the Winnipeg Jets seem to have a penchant towards playing their younger players on lower lines where they have less chance of succeeding and lower minutes than probably they should be based on their talent such as they did with Truba and uh, Truba got mad and left uh, at least it appears that way okay I shouldn't be I, it certainly appears that way and it looks like it appears that way to the players involved and uh, Lion A it seems has said you know what I'm a 40 goal scorer I know I'm a 40 goal scorer. The fact that she didn't play me in a position that allowed me to score 40 goals does not make it any different that I am. So if you're going to pay me the 40, either you're paying me for 40 goal seasons or I'm out of here. And they're like, well, you didn't get 40 goal seasons. And then the agent and him are like, well, because you did it on purpose, I think, or the way you used me or blah, blah, blah. And then the team will say, well, you know, you should be happy that you're on whatever, you know, something like that. Anyways, two sides are not agreeing, and I'm just guessing that that's what happened, but I don't think it was far from it, <laughs> to tell you the honest truth. So, Lion A is on his way out. We're going to be looking today at where Lion A may go, and why, and how, and all of those things like that. I got a couple teams for you, about three, I think. Uh, yeah, three. Three teams they may go. So, right now, we're looking at... The Winnipeg Jets and their situation here. Lion A, as you can see, can play left or right wing. Now, this, especially this year, the most important part of this whole process is this part here, right? You've heard it, heard it, heard it over and over and over again. Cap space, cap space, cap space. And with the signings of a few players, such as Dylan DeMello for $3 million, and Boilu, they gave him a little bit. Derek Fulbert, they brought in. Um, did they re-up somebody? They brought in Paul Stastny at six and a half. That chews up the cap space pretty quick. <laughs> um, they have like zero cap space for this year. Now, they've got a lot of options next year, if you want to put it that way. They can probably sign Stastny for cheaper, uh, not bring parole back at all, and bring some young guys up. Uh, Lowry, they'll probably sign. They have some issues. They'll probably be better off next year. But as it stands, 
if they're going to trade Lion A, they're probably going to have to get at least equal amount of money back uh, or less for this year, unless they want to move other players as well. And they still got to sign Jack Roslovich and uh, Jansen Harkins. Ro Roslovich probably won't cost too much, but they're already over the cap as it is. So interesting stuff going on there in the Winnipeg. But let's look at a few teams. I got three teams for you. We'll go over as quickly as I can. Columbus Blue Jackets is the first team rumored to um, be looking into. By the way, I, I think the last time I did that video, I had them going to the Rangers, but things have changed a lot since then. And uh, looking at it, I think with their new acquisitions and stuff, it really doesn't make sense for them to add to their forward group as it stands with the cap space they have. They have a lot of young players that can come up and maybe fill that role equally as good or almost for significantly less money. Let's remember Lion A is, got, is up for contract. So whoever this goes to, they got to sign him. And uh, I don't know what he's asking for, but if it's 40 goal scorer money, uh, you can be rest assured that it's quite a bit. Uh, his previous one contract was 6.7 and a half. I'm thinking that he's going to get a short term up until 2027 for about seven or eight million. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, now he doesn't have much leverage except I'm not going to play but so a team could really just give him the same amount that he was already making so let's go at let's look at the Columbus Blue Jackets uh, cap space 12.9 million but they have this fellow to sign don't they Pierre-Luc Dubois and I think he's going to command somewhere in the six million mark maybe more for a long-term contract. He's a restricted free agent. They can give him a bridge deal, maybe at $4 million for a couple of years or something like that. And that would give them the room that they need to do that. If I could, I would sign Dubois to $6 million for as long as I possibly can. Um, if I was them. And I'm not them. But that's what I would do. So that would still leave them $6 million And you can change, you can move things around. There's, there's things that they can do to try to get more cap space here. On uh, Teams always seem to be able to find a way to find cap space when they need it. One of the things they could do is trade Elvis Merzlikens and Jonas Carpasala. One of them is probably going to have to go because they're not going to want to give up. Uh, they're not going to want to lose them for nothing in expansion. However, they might keep them until the trade deadline if they can't. Anyways, I'm Lion A. I'm Winnipeg. I have Lion A. And these guys want him. Now, let's sell. I'll tell you this right now. Lion A's trade value, because of all the reasons I suggested or have talked about with cap space, is probably not as high as people think. Um, I think I'd be, I'd be very, I think in this um, environment, cap environment, Trying to get the same amount of money back is the big thing. So, Oliver Bjorkstrand, right winger, making two and a half million. He's going to be a restricted free agent next year. However, we just showed that Winnipeg's going to be better off cap wise next year. So, if you need to sign him for a raise, it's not that bad of a deal. Oliver Bjorkstrand, by the way, has been become somewhat of a 25 goal scorer in the league. 20, somewhere around there. Uh, 36 points in 49 games last year. And I think if he played for a more offensive team like Winnipeg, he could put more. I just really like him. I still think he has some growing to do. He's only 25. He's probably a 50 to 60 point winger in the league. And he actually plays the game well all over the ice. So I would be asking for a guy like him I think they would probably try to get Nick Foligno on me and I'm like nope got Gustav Nyquist at five and a half million he's just not producing enough at 31 years old for me to take him back in this deal I want Bjorkstrand and I want Vladislav Gavrikov who they absolutely have to sign if they give me Bjorkstrand and Gavrikov and maybe I give back a pick or something like that 
I'd be happy with that. I would do that pick, the thing, do that trade. However, I don't know if they would. They love Gavrikov, and you should love Gavrikov. He's fantastic. I'm pretty sure they're going to be trying to give up Savard. And even at that, if we remove Savard, let's look at the depth chart here. If we remove Savard, let's put Lion A here instead of Bjorkstrand. That's beautiful. You got Lion A, Dubois, and Foudy, who looks fantastic. I like that, putting him up there. He's improving uh, quite a bit. Remember, they made this this nice Max Domi trade for an Ander for Anderson, who I think they're probably going to end up looking like, smelling like roses. Felino and Atkinson. You got two pretty solid lines, especially with Lion A. Um, I might go as far as to put Atkinson up here with Dubois. I think he plays better with him. And I would put Lion A with Max Domi, who's more of a playmaker for Lion A. Uh, like I said, Gustav Nyquist is making five and a half, and he doesn't even make our top six here. Although, you could make a case for bringing Felino down here and putting Nyquist up there, and it's still not a bad top six. They have more scoring here now with Lion A, for sure. And uh, it would look better there. Now, but if we remove Gavrikov or Savard, we're bringing Kukan up. And that is not ideal. You don't really want Kukan up in your top four. Uh, they don't have much for defensemen coming up. In fact, in this situation, Andrew Peake will is a 22-year-old kid is going to be playing in your regular in their regular lineup. I'm not sure they're going to be too overly fond of that happening, and they don't have too much. It's possible they say no to this deal simply because their defense is getting hit too much. But that's what I want. And if they offer it, I may take it. But let's look at other uh, teams that might be offering stuff here. The big one, another big rumor, Buffalo Sabres have been rumored, even after Hall. They picked up Hall. Hall's a left winger. Let's look down at their uh, cap room after all that. They still have $13 million in cap space. Uh, they have Victor Olofsson to sign, which shouldn't cost them too much, maybe like... 3 million for two or three years or something like that, which will still leave them 10 million and not much else to sell oh, Sam Reinhardt. But here's the thing. In my world, if I'm making this trade with Buffalo, they don't need to worry about signing Sam Reinhardt because I'm getting Sam Reinhardt. Because that's the only player here that turns my crank besides Victor Olofsson. And I prefer Reinhardt over Olofsson. So, um, Olufsen's got a great shot. They could do either one. They got to sign both. Oh my gosh. So that 13 million all of a sudden is going to get, but either way, Sam Reinhardt's probably going to demand five to $6 million, something like Jordan Everly money, five and a half million for as long as you can get them for. So if, if we're trading Lion A in that situation, we're getting back quite a bit of money back here with Sam Reinhardt because we still have to sign him. Then we need a defenseman, right? We already talked about that. We're going to need a defenseman because our defense in Winnipeg is pretty weak. And the only defenseman that I would be happy with here, honestly, that, I mean, I would love Yokiharu, but there's no way they're doing both of those. Uh, they, they may trade Yokiharu and Tage Thompson, or something like that, and I consider that and maybe a first round pick. Yoki Haru, Tage Thompson, and a first round pick next year on a team that may miss the playoffs, I would consider that. But really, I want Jake McCabe. I want Jake McCabe and, um, what did I say? And Sam Reinhardt. Sam Reinhardt and Jake McCabe. I probably am okay with that deal. I'm taking money back almost the same. I can work over in Winnipeg. I can work my $2 million or whatever around that I may cap by the start of the season, and I'm all right. But a big uh, left defenseman like Jake McCabe who can hit, play in my top four, and uh, Reinhardt who is a serviceable right winger, slash center to me is decent value 
for a guy like Lion A, who, by the way, it isn't really the best value for, who should probably be bringing back more than this. But a combination of the fact that Winnipeg really has already played their cards, so they have very little leverage. It's pretty much known that Lion A is leaving. That's never good for trade value. And the fact that we're in a cap world where every dollar counts, it makes it difficult to get actual value back for Lion A. But that would be my trade there. Now we go to the Carolina Hurricane. That's my last one of the Carolina Hurricane. Now, people ask, why would they want a goal, somebody like Lion A there in uh, Carolina? Well, in some ways, I understand what you're saying because you really need to be taking care of this part in Carolina. Mrazek and Reimer is your number one and two. However, they're both off the books next year. And uh, that being the case, um, they can. it looks like they're just going to run with them one more year. Well, if that's the case, first of all, once they're off the books, you can get yourself a solid goaltender to play, right, next year. Um, second of all, you can get Lion A and give up the same amount of money that you're, so you're not going to be adding too much more um, to the cap. We didn't look at, where's Carolina's cap at? Carolina's cap is at, current cap space is $5 million. Not that great uh, with Warren Fogel to sign. But here's my offer if I'm Carolina. This is who I want if I'm Winnipeg. If I'm Winnipeg, I want Martin Nietzsche and Brady Shea. That's who I want. Uh, if you offer Brady Shea and Nietzsche, I'm probably going to accept that deal. Uh, Nietzsche doesn't need to get paid for a couple years. Works out perfect for us. Uh, Brady Shea is getting all the money at $5 million. It evens it out a little bit, so they're still able to sign Lion A. And as far as uh, Brady Shea, as it stands, maybe the odd man out in uh, when it goes to expansion anyways. Because Dougie Hamilton's going to be protected, Slavin's going to be protected, and then it's between Pesci and Shea. And I have a feeling as long as Pesci's okay from his injury, Pesci's going to be the one they want to keep, and Shea is the one they're going to want to let go. So you trade him away and you get value for him anyways in a really good deal. As far as Winnipeg is concerned, they get a great, a very good two-way defenseman that can play on their left side, and I absolutely love Martin Nietzsche. I think he is going to be a fantastic player in this league. He got 36 points in 64 games last year as a 22-year-old. This guy could be a 70-point player on your team, which also may be why it doesn't happen, because it's quite oft, quite a, a possible that Carolina goes, no, no, no. But let's look at that depth chart again, boys and girls. Look at what would happen. If you took Lion A, Svechnikov, Aho, Teravainen, or Lion A, because Lion A can play right, remember? You can drop to Zingle. You can put Lion A on the left side of Vincent Trocek and Nino Niederreiter. What? What an incredible top six. Then you've got... Uh, you, you can. That's the other thing. You can find a home for Ryan Dezingle. I bet you could find a home for that. So you can sign Lion A. I bet you can find a home for him. As far as for defensemen are concerned, if you losing Brady Shea, um, yeah, Jake Gardner may not be the best option up there in the top four, but he's not a terrible option. And you have Hayden Flurry. And Jake Bean has been sitting in the minors for a long time. Joey Keane. They've got a lot of defensemen that they need to make room for anyways, which kind of made people wonder why they got into it and got Brady Shea to begin with. But that was because Dougie Hamilton was hurt and all kinds of stuff. I kind of understand it. But they can give that up. Now, if you're going to have this goaltending tandem of Mrazek and Reimer, you better be able to score all the hell. And now you're adding a possible 40-goal score. If 
if we wanted to, we could put Svechnikov, Aho, and Lyonnais as our top line, man. That'd be one of the best top lines in the league. This is uh, in the league. And then you could put, you know, Taravainen down here with Trocek. And Niederreiter can play on the left too, or keep the Zingle there. But you, so many options on this lineup. This lineup is absolutely fantastic. Um, again, I want Nietzsche and I want Brady Shea, Carolina. That's what I'm asking. Uh, so if, if I don't get something like that, I'm looking for a first round draft pick next year with anybody else. Like uh, Brett Pesci, possibly I could accept that deal, but I'm really going to want to talk to my doctors to find out if this, this kid's okay because he was really injured. I would consider that, but I think they'd be more likely to offer up Brady Shea. For a lesser forward like Nito Nito Niederreiter, plus taking all this cap space off of their hands, I would want a first on top of it because I'm going to have to get rid of somebody on my lineup to make up for that. And I'm not really a huge Niederreiter fan, so I don't think that's really going to work for me. If I want to give, if they want to give up to Zingle, and they're just and I can't find anybody else really to give me a better deal than this. Uh, than what I, exactly what I want from my other trades. I'm going to want a first and Brady Shea with Dzingo, Uh because I'm going to need somebody better than Dzingle down in the future. But those are the sort of trades I could see happening for Lyonie. This is the one that I'd be pining for if I was the uh, Jets. Now, another one, I'm just going to mention another one really quick, and that's Montreal Canadiens. The Montreal Canadiens were rumored a lot, but with all the additions that they've done now and the fact that they don't really have a top four defense to offer, I took them off the table. That's my full 42%, boys and girls. I hope you've enjoyed this fine programming. And uh, I'm getting a little long on the tooth here. 20 minutes I talked about this, but I had much frolic. Did you have much frolic? I should hope so. Subscribe, bell. Steelflyers.com. Check out that website, man. It's going to be freaking amazing. Uh, if you like betting, I have a betting site called uh, BPOW on Patreon. We're making tons of money there. Once hockey season gets started, we really are rolling. But I'm doing tennis, kicking butt on tennis. We're kicking butt on football. Baseball's been a little rough this year, I have to say. But all the other ones, we're still up money. Go check it out. BPOW Picks and uh, Steel Flyers website. Until next time, boys and girls, have a great day. Lots of love to ya.